Welcome back to On The Daily. In this episode, I get to catch up with my friend, my client, my my, my Lord and Savior, Micheline Sandberg, who is the CEO and founder of Queen Bee Design Studio. She is, I think, we, I don't even know how long we've been working together, but we've gone from like strangers at Monster Jam to like her being a private client of mine, to being a mastermind and a private client of mine, to being like a business partner in a, in a lot of ways. Like she's helped me create so many different cool things for different projects I have. Uh, and she has gone from like small town wedding invite invite designer to like literally best invitations of LA to now having her own personal brand where she's diving into coaching. And I just wanted to catch up with her because she is like a true embodiment of a manifesting generator and how quickly and how ferociously their passions can change and evolve and pivot. And it's just been such an honor to like watch and to have a front row seat to everything that Micheline has done in the last few years. So I wanted to catch up so we could like have this conversation. So buckle up because this is a really, really good episode. I'm so excited for you to hear it. Hey friend, welcome to On The Daily. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary, and I am a quantum business coach. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm a multi six figure entrepreneur, co founder, and president of Hype You Media, and CEO of Danielle on the Daily Coaching. What I'm really interested in is helping you live a life and have a business that is a full body yes. So, through all of my education and all of my experience, I'm bringing you two episodes a week where I will guide you and give you the tools necessary to scale a massive, sustainable, and sexy business using your intuition, wealth energetics, and human design. What we can call it is business biohacking. So if you're down for that, then I say let's frickin' go. I'm so glad you're here. Micheline Sandberg is back on the daily. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. (laughs) <laughs> I know it's so funny too, because I'm always like, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. As if I don't talk to you most days. Like, I think I, I talk to you more than I talk to most people. <laughs> That's exciting. I mean, yeah. I love talking to you. So it's, a, but it's always fun to catch up in like this setting because yeah. sometimes we're just chatting, you know, uh, Shit's Creek memes. <laughs> I know that, you know, somebody's a real friend. Like I always say, like, you know, we're friends when I send you memes because I take my memes very seriously. And so (laughs) if I'm communicating to you via meme, we're friends. (laughs) We're on the same level. (laughs) Um, Okay. Well, it's been a while since we've uh, had you here and so much has changed. Yeah, so much. Gosh, I mean, you you made a whole other human. So that happened. You have a whole ass. You have a whole ass new human. (laughs) This girl, y'all... When you tell me, when anybody tells me like, oh, I could never start my own business. Like I'm a mom. I'm like, go talk to my friend, Micheline, who has not one, not two, but three boys and a husband who's a firefighter and like gone a lot. And she has built and scaled and started so many new projects and so many businesses. And you're, it's just like, I just think you're, I think you're so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I feel like a crazy person, but it's funny because when we started talking about, I think I felt that way before, right? Cause mm-hmm. I always had so many passions. And then when we met and you started explaining to me about human design and manifesting generator, I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. I am not a crazy person. I just mm-hmm. know that I want to dive into a lot of things. And the more things I do, the more energy I get. And then especially when they're backed with like, I get to see other people grow or help other people and like partner with people on projects. Like it's just so much fun. And so it it does get crazy around here with three littles and, Mm -hmm. you know, a firefighter husband, but it's always fun. I don't know. I always try to find, figure out ways to make it work. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no. I was just to say one thing you always say is like how actually like leaning farther into your business and like actually continuing to build your business is what makes you a better mom. Like you talk about that a lot. I would love for you to expand on that because we got a lot of moms that listen to the show. Yeah. Um, I think that I come from a supportive immediate family, but my generational line is not all that supportive of women businesses. And um, I think it's just a, it's just an old 
way of thinking, right? So I came out like the black sheep and I was like, I'm going to start all these businesses. I'm, I'm going to get paid to talk one day. <laughs> there were like all these big dreams and everyone just looked at me like, yeah, okay, well, you know, how to know how that's going to work with you being a mom. Mm-hmm. So that always kind of seemed like the goal, right? To be the mom. And while I love being a mom, I love showing my boys like what can be, like wh- what it looks like to chase after your dreams and still have a family and still be a mom and look what we can create. You've got an idea. Let's go for it. And I'm, and I'm all about it. So when they come up with crazy ideas, I'm like, okay, if this is what you're going to do, this is how a business works. You're going to work on selling a project and it makes them more creative, more patient. And when they see me chasing my goals, you know, and accomplishing big things, it's really quite inspiring to say like, Hey, I can do this. And like, I'm I'm hoping to lay the foundation for them to not only mm-hmm. do the same, but to surpass me like tenfold. I want to see them just shoot past me and me be like what I'm striving for as my goal. I want them that to be their baseline. Like, mm. if, and I want that so bad for them. So, yeah, we've, we've had a conversation. We had it recently about like how we stand on every generation before us and that, I think in society, it's often looked at as like a negative thing. Like, oh, my parents can't get it. And like, I'm, I would be lying if I didn't say like, I have tried, like there's been moments where I want to like shake my parents. Like even when my dad was alive, like there were moments where I just like wanted to shake them and like shake my mom and be like, there's so many things you could do. Like my mom is so creative. She makes the coolest things. I'm always like, mom, start an Etsy store. Mom, do this, mom, do that. And she's like, she's like, no, like, I make like, she makes these incredible baby blankets and she's like, no, I would never want to like sell them because like, they're not perfect. And I'm like, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. (laughs) It's like, that's why you go on Etsy to shop because it's like handmade with love. And like, you know, that there's like some imperfections and it actually adds to it. It makes it even better. And she's like, oh no, I could never. And like, there's been so many moments where I just want to like shake my mom. Love Terry. I love you, Terry. You're, you might be listening. You may be, I don't know if my mom's ever listened to my podcast, but Terry, I love you. And sometimes I want to shake you. Um, But we had this conversation because it's so in our society, it's like, we think that it's our job to like bring our parents with us when actually like this realization that I think you and I both had was like, it's almost like they're, it's like DOS versus iOS. Like they're a DOS computer. They're working on like a different program, like a completely different operating system, like in general, but iOS, iPhone wouldn't be where it is today without DOS. So it's almost like I've learned, and I want you to like speak to your experience. Like I've almost learned like it's okay that my parents' goals were my baseline, just like you just said, Owen's baseline will be my biggest goals. And I think that I've come to realize that that's actually the point. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't know. And I, I agree a hundred percent. And it's so funny that your mom makes the baby blankets. Cause we just, I just had this conversation with my mom who makes amazing baby blankets. I'm like, mom, sell them on Etsy. So it's funny. Mm-hmm. We're having the same conversation, but mm-hmm. I agree. I think that my parents' biggest goals became my baseline. And, mm-hmm. and so when you, I think as the child in the scenario, you have that realization, you stop looking at the past as like, oh, I got to break this thing. I got to break it. I mean, there are things definitely to be broken and there's traumas to be healed, but you're, you stop trying to break what you're standing on. So I think that's like, you go, okay, I accept it. You may never become a business person and that's totally fine, but I'm going to do it. And then Mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to join me on the, on the upside. Mm -hmm. So it's funny. We always talk about our, our big goals for the years or like, you know, in general and how we're all going to go to Italy and we're all going to have pasta in the water on a float, like just like the silliest things. But I tell this and I say it out loud and, and even though it sounds silly, it's totally on my vision board and I'm going to make it happen. And we're doing it. Yeah, we are. Like we're doing it. You and me. (laughs) You and I are a hundred percent going to Italy and we're going to lay in the middle of Lake Como on a raft and drink and pasta. whatever and eat pasta and pizza. Like it's a hundred percent. That's not, that's yeah. not a dream. That's no, like, that's what we're doing next year. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's what my family thinks that like, when I say that they're like, yeah, okay. They kind of laugh at it. And it was funny. Cause when I had the conversation, I was like, oh no, you guys are coming to my parents. And they're like, what oh, yeah. do you mean? I'm like, who do you think is going to babysit my kids? <laughs> when I hire you as the nanny, you have to come. And so Hello. they're always like, <laughs> they're always like, yeah, that's funny. But when I do accomplish these goals, even 
as they start out small, like when we first started working together, it was, it was simply like just getting out of a small town mindset, like just yeah. getting out of that felt huge. And then yeah. once I saw that and I was like, the world is like my oyster. I can go anywhere. I can do anything. And so mm-hmm. as like the next goal became to be published in, you know, a magazine for my artwork, then that was that came and went really fast. And then I was like, okay, now what's next? And then being voted best invitation designer in LA, I was like, okay, what's next? And so it just seems to, the goals may seem crazy to everybody else, but like, for me, I'm like, this is just like another checklist I'm going after. And you can't Thank you, daddy universe more, please. Like you almost just like, it's like, once you realize that like God universe source is like, actually like you're the sugar daddy and like, God source universe is just here to like bring you everything that you desire. Like once that switches in your brain, all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, yeah. what are we doing this? What are we doing this week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, for anybody that's like, for anybody that's new here, um, who hasn't, uh, Mickalene was on my podcast. I want you to go back and I want you to listen to that episode because that episode was like a couple, like o- over a year ago now. And even from then to now, like just listening to you is so much different. Like I would love to do a side-by-side comparison, but like it's, it's, it's shocking and not shocking, like how far you've come. And for anybody that's new here, when we first started working together, one of the very first things she said to me on a call was like, well, you know, like I'm, I'm a small town designer and my town only has like, she's from a small town in California. And she's like, my town only has like a certain amount of people. And I've kind of like already tapped the market. So I just like, don't know what growth looks like from here. And I'm like, okay. 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 Uh, you make inv- invitations. Yes. And she's like, yeah, I'm like, great. So the, you have a website where people go online to purchase them. Yes. She's like, yes. I'm like, and you can ship them anywhere. Right. And she was like, yes. And then there was like a silence and then you kind of were like, oh, <laughs> and it was just like, this light went on and I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Like you have an online business girl. There's no like, small town, anything like you got a digital business, which means you have a global business. Like let's start acting like it. And that was kind of, I think the first like big aha you had and that Mm -hmm. kind of set, I mean, and then we dove into human design and like, you realize that all these things that you thought were wrong with you for so long were actually like your superpowers and that kind of set your wheels in motion. And like, yeah, I mean the last, the last three years that we've known each other, like it's just been like one goal after another, after another, after another. And then you go viral and it's like, like <laughs> viral, viral, like literally y'all, when we started working together, her account, how many followers did you have when we first started working I together? I think I had 1100 followers when I first started working with you. She had 1100 and followers. Huge. Yeah. Awesome. And that felt huge. And she's like, I'd love to get to 5,000. And I was like, yeah, we could get to 5,000. Like we could totally get to 5,000. And then it like steadily grew. Like it was really steadily growing for a long time. And then all of a sudden, like you just had this moment and you were like, I'm just going to stop thinking about like what I'm going to post. I'm just going to post the stuff I want to post. And it was like only two weeks after that, that you, I mean, y'all, when I say viral, like how many, like one of them has like over 30 million. I like 29.6 million I, or seven, I think as of this morning, 29.7 million. Views. Like how many, how many <laughs> posts do you have that are over a million or close to it now? Like a lot. I think I have like five over a million and then like, like maybe 10 or 12 that are like in the three digit, like right yeah. there yeah. happening. So. And it's crazy. Cause then like overnight you like went to like over 20,000 followers. Yeah, it was it was wild. Almost like that moment where you're like, you're like ready for it. Right. And you think you're ready for it. And then it happens. And I'm like, I felt like my phone was like popcorn. I like had to throw it because it was like, mm-hmm. bing, 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 bing. And I was like that was I the day know. that she turned off her notifications. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what to do with this. I appreciate everybody, but this is bonkers. And it really, and it really started to see like, I think the reason why things went viral were because, um, because people, when I started talking about what I wanted to talk about, or when I was talking about actual issues in the wedding industry, because it was with the weddings, um, yeah. people just wanted to wanted to know that their point of view or their decision in their wedding was valid. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it was really wild because the message that I always talk about is like what I love about working with people is I always tell them don't do what someone tells you you should be doing. Do what you want to do. And I've been saying that for so long, but when I finally said it in a way that was, I wouldn't say like aggressive, but it was just like, Hey, like this is it, you know? And then people were 
they jumped on board and then it really hasn't stopped since. So it's been, it's been crazy to see the growth there, but like to recognize what was, I wouldn't say triggering, but was like, it compelled people to be so engaging with, with a post that really, I thought could have just, you know, people could have just blown right by. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think the other thing we need to talk about, about like going viral, which you learned was going viral is awesome. And like, it's always something to be celebrated, but it's, it's not always, everyone thinks that going viral is going to lead to like a ton of sales, right? Like that's always the, the yeah. oh, when I get up, when I go viral, like it's going to add to sales. And I think like, I don't think that you thought that because like you and I had talked about this before, but yeah your revelation around like going viral, I think is really, really important for the masses to hear because it could have very easily sent you off a ledge and like closed you up, but it actually like expanded you even more. And so I would love for you to share like what the reality of that is actually like. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So like I said, it was bonkers at first. Like I, I remember like just like refreshing and it would be like 12 million and then it would jump to like 15 million. And I was like, this has to be a glitch. This cannot be real. And it just kept growing. And so it made me kind of nervous. Cause I was like, Oh great. Now I have all these eyes on me. I don't want to disappoint anybody. Now there's this pressure to keep creating content. That's going to constantly go viral. And it, and it started to, I like, it started to like lean that way. Like, okay, great. Now, now what do I do? And so when I kind of took a step back, um, and I did, I posted like the next one and it didn't, it didn't do as great, you know, but it, it got way more than what I was used to. So then I started to think about it like, okay, well there, I have to be, I have to accept the fact that I'm not going to be for everybody. Right. But what happened was that when I went viral and so many people followed me, which is great, like you said, because it gets new eyes on my content, but most of the people that were writing in were people who were already married. Mm -hmm. And people who were following were already married. So they really weren't my target audience for sales. They were my target audience for uh, engagement. Um, And so then I had to start to realize that when I started pushing offers for sales for brides and grooms, like everything was tanking because Mm -hmm. my audience was not who they thought I was. I, you know, because they they followed me off of one post and that was it. So yeah. when all of a sudden they were like, wait, what does this girl do? And then as I was like, oh, I make wedding invitations, like the following started to fall off, which was fine too, because then I started realizing, great, let's get back to the people I can serve. Mm-hmm. But it also made me think about, because with something we had talked about was I didn't want to constantly have to look for new um, customers because like once I served somebody for their wedding, I didn't want them to be like, well, there's no point for me to hang around anymore. So right. what I started to do is we started shifting Queen Bee's products. And so now we have a Queen Bee weddings, we have interiors, and now we have baby. So like as your life progresses, mm-hmm. like we can still serve you. So it forced me to change quickly of my, or like paint, pivot where my business was headed, which I was excited about. Anyways, we talked about this previously, right? But it like fast tracked me said, okay, see, see these people yeah. are here. They like what you have to say. They may not be in weddings, but how else can you serve them? Right. Well, and that was one of the things that I had said to you. I was like, listen, like what you want is for people to stick around and for people to like follow you regardless if they're married or not, because you have like a trajectory for them in terms of like what they, how they can work with you. And so like when you put it out there, like I said, you got a, you, you had a good relationship with, you know, daddy universe up there. And so like, <laughs> you, it like, it happened really fast. And, yes. um, it was really, it was actually really cool to watch how fast you pivoted. Like you pivoted into like baby announcements and like you pivoted into like cool guides and like all these things. And it, it kind of like, yeah, I think it jettisoned you into like, okay, all of these things. Cause we had been talking about basically like this idea that we had for like, you wanted to create like this umbrella company of queen bee. And I was like, it's like Magnolia. Like if, for those of you who know, know Magnolia, if you've ever been there, like they have Magnolia home, they have Magnolia men, they have Magnolia bakery, they have Magnolia everything. And I was like, it's kind of that idea where queen bee goes from just being like wedding invites and like, you know, wedding design to baby to home. You also do wedding coordinating for certain people. Like you coordinated my wedding. Like there's, it's like you kind of turned it into, and that's what the goal was for a really long time. But I think sometimes like 
you don't know what the catalyst is going to be. And for you, it was going viral and going from like zero to a million overnight and from like 2000 to 20,000 followers in like four days. Like that's what it was for you that took you to that, like forced you to get into that next level. And I think this is where a lot of people get like so tripped up is they go viral, they think it's going to solve all their problems and then their sales don't happen. And then they go, womp, womp. And you, I mean, uh, you had, we had a moment, you and I had a moment, we had a conversation (laughs) and I was like, this is what you wanted. So like, what are we going to do about it? And like, it was cool to watch how fast you pivoted. It was, it was cool to watch how fast you were like, I'm going to do this instead. And it was all stuff in your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. It was just, there was no, it wasn't, you weren't waiting anymore. You were going to make it happen. And I think that's what really important to like, realization to have as a manifesting generator to know your human design because like I have an idea to do this umbrella thing right but the rest of the world is like niche niche down niche down niche down and that felt like death to me and I couldn't stand it and so when I started to when I learned about it and I said okay the here's my idea and in on the outside it was like I want to help you know, I want to help people on their weddings, but I really like home decor and, and as people have babies. So like on the outside, people are like, oh, that's not related. But to me, it's like, this makes sense, you know? And so leaning into that after, like you said, having that catalyst, it makes sense to me where the rest Mm -hmm. of the world, or if you don't know what your, you know, your human design is and whether or not you're a manifesting generator, though, you know, you might go, oh, I need to go viral. And this one video that went viral just happened to be about honeymoons. Now I'm going to lean hard into honeymoons and like, and then you're like, well, it's not, it wasn't about the honeymoon thing. Right. But like, if you don't know that and you try to super niche down, I think that's where people also crash and burn too. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and yeah. And it, I think the other thing it did, which I, I, I'm excited to like, this is a great segue into this is like, it also made you think like, oh, people just want to be heard. People just want their voices heard. Like I need to create community. And this is something like, I know that you've been like, thinking about for a really long time, but it was something that like we, you had never voiced or like we had never had a conversation about in like depth. But I also feel like the going viral thing and just like seeing like how people, how much people want to be heard is what took your personal brand to another level. And like, this is what I really like. I'm so excited to talk about because when I say that like Queen Bee's how old now? 12, 13, 12 years. Yeah. 12 years old. So Queen Bee, she's built this business. She, it's like Queen Bee is its own thing. And one of the biggest things that I always try to teach all my clients, but like now, like one thing we've worked on very much is like, you are the brand and your business gets to be an extension of who you are. And as an MG, that really set you free because you were like, oh, well, I have all these other things and I'm all these other like colors and you love to color. It's like your favorite thing in the world. So it's like, well, what, what, what else can we color? And so insert that girl, (laughs) right. Which is, has nothing. (laughs) Yeah. Insert has nothing to do with queen bee, but is still, it draws from all these experiences, like y'all manifesting generators. The reason you have so many passions is not so that you do them all, all at once. You can do them all, all at once, but it's like every experience you have will inform the next one. Every opportunity you take will inform the next one. And so like, what is that girl? And like, how, how did she come? How did she come to be? All right. (laughs) Well, yeah, I started that girl club. Um, When I was growing up, uh, you know, I heard it a lot. Oh, you're that girl. And it really started to feel negative to like be that girl who was doing a lot of things. Or I was like, you know, we call it like um, captain of the nerd club. I was like in all the all the clubs I was doing all the extra and I, and I loved it. But I imagine on the outside, I probably looked like a chicken with my head cut off. But you know, a lot of the times that's like, you hear that, oh, you're that girl. And I was like, you know what? I'm sick of hearing it and it being a bad thing. So I'm going to start a community of women who are either starting out businesses or want something more and just don't, they just don't know what to do. And they gonna, they're going to be that girl, that girl that other women follow and other women can look to. And we're going to have like this community of women who are like, yeah, let's go for it. You know, big, small, you know, whatever it is, because I think that too many times we hear, oh, you're just a mom or I'm just a stay home mom or, you know, they say the just and I hate the just word. I'm like, stop, stop labeling your name just because yeah. there's nothing just about you. 
Right. Right. So I wanted to build this whole, this whole community based around shifting your mindset, things that we worked on, things that I had worked on even before we had met, um, because going through therapy, there were a lot of things that touched on, but now I just have the, the verbiage for it. Like I know how to vocalize what I've been learning for so long. And so, yeah, we created that girl club. And I say we, because I always like to think of me and like me and another person, <laughs> but it's really just me. Um, I created that girl club and we have um, a master class, master classes going on that talk about goal setting, how to set brands. And I use my design background to so talk about how to build brands and how that brand is going to convert to content and how that converts to sales. And so just using everything I've learned through Queen Bee and putting it in bite-sized pieces for other women who are like, all right, I think I want something more out of life. And maybe it's a business, maybe it's not, but the community is there to support them either way. So it's really fun. I mean, and and one of the things you said to me was like, well, I'm just like, not, I'm not a coach. Like I, I haven't ever had a coaching. I'm like, who cares? Like coaches teach when they have something to teach. Like there's no one better position to teach about branding and to teach about like goal setting and like discipline and consistency than you, because you've spent the last over a decade doing that. So now take all those skills and teach other people how to do it too. And it, that was like another light bulb moment. And like, I just, I, I love your story because it's like, you, you are the epitome of like, you have never once stayed in a box, at least since I've known you. I don't know, maybe, I guess, yeah. I mean, I've heard your stories. Like, I guess you used to kind of keep yourself in a box, but like, you're not meant to be. And the more you get to explore your passions, the more you get to explore what you love, the more you get to explore like, oh, how can I play in this way today? How can I do this? How can I do that? Like, oh, Queen Bee does weddings. Well, great. Queen Bee also does X, Y, and Z. And you as an MG getting to like, really setting yourself free of any sort of limitations that maybe society or even yourself have like put on you over the years. That's really where you've started to like excel and your money doesn't just come from one place. Like your success doesn't just come from one place and it never, it probably never will. And really watching you set yourself free from that constraint has, I mean, for me, it's been everything. Like it's, that's been, that's been my favorite part of your journey is that like it, you know, in the beginning, it was like, well, I, 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 I make money through this. And it was like, well, right. But you could also do this. And like, now you have money coming in from Etsy and you have money coming in from here and you have money coming in from here. And like, sure. Have we had lower months? Yeah, of course we have. We all have had lower months. Have, have things dipped? Have we had to contract so that we can expand? Yeah. But like, if you look at all these things that you've listed, that you've checked off your box, you hired an assistant, like that was huge for you. Like there's so many things that you've, opened yourself up to strictly because you stopped listening to the noise of like what was expected of you based on your, you know, lineage and like your family and like their families and like everything that's been passed down, you really setting yourself free of all that has been huge, which is why you have like all these things now. And it's like, if you're a projector listening to this, you're like, that's exhausting. Well, yeah, but you're not, that's not, that's not how your energy flows. Like MGs, manifesting generators, like they're truly the ones that can do it all. Like they are hyper capable people. I'm not an MG. Like all the things that Michaeline is like responsible for and like manages, I'm like, I would fall over, but I'm a generator. Like it's not how my energy is supposed to flow. And so like, that's been, that's been a huge, it's been really fun to watch you just like, I'm going to try this today. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it also, it also goes hand in hand with like breaking free from the expectations within each industry too. Right. So like as a wedding invitation designer, I know that I, I followed this pattern of like being neat and pretty and like put together and calm and like this whole like image of like what, like what weddings are. And then as and then as as we're expanding Queen Bee and we're talking about all the different branches, I know we talked about how I'm like, you know what? I, I did it. I did the super ultra pretty high end luxury wedding invitations. And now I really just want to work with people who are excited about being authentic. And so that, start, that starts to feel more freeing, too, because then I can say, you know what? I'm, I can do the luxury. I can do the high end. You want like a scroll covered in gold. Like I can do all that. That's not a problem, but I don't feel boxed into that. Like say, mm -hmm. I'm not, 
a wedding invitation that does X, Y, Z. Like I, I'm a wedding, I'm a designer who works with people who love to be themselves. And then that I think is energetic because then that brings a, a type of energy to the project. And then that translates into, you know, all the other things that we do do through design. So it's, it's been yeah. fun. Yeah. You, you really have, and it's just like by, by allowing yourself to do that, you've really then taken like you've taken your personal brand and now you've like been able to apply everything over there as well. So it's almost like, it's like you're, you're continuously learning what works in queen B and then you get to teach it in yeah. that girl club. And it's like, that's the whole point, right? We live our lives. We learn lessons. We teach those lessons. Like that's coaching. So yeah. you're perfectly positioned to be a coach because you're constantly learning new lessons by living it inside of queen bee, but it's like queen bee doesn't have to be all of you. Like queen bee is a part of you and it's a big part of you. Yeah. And like, it's still just an extension of Micheline because Micheline is the brand and she has this very successful business. That's now like an umbrella of all these other little businesses. And then she also has coaching because why wouldn't she like, why wouldn't you coach given all of the experience that you have like that? I think that's what I said to you. I was like, why wouldn't you coach like that? That's ridiculous to me that you wouldn't coach because you have so much experience. So, and I feel like I like the idea of helping women who are like starting out, right? Like they're mm -hmm. just like, they're just getting ready to dip their toe into the pool because I know when I was in that um, position, there weren't a lot of, so there wasn't a lot of support. I mean, obviously this is 12 years ago and coaching really wasn't even a big thing back then right, either. Right. I remember like thinking, how do I even start? And, and now you can follow people on Instagram. Right. And then they follow, you know, people like you, which is fantastic, but you're like, you you've already kind of got like your, your benchmark of like, Hey, you kind of have to be at this mindset, this level to see growth with me. Right. And mm -hmm. I, and I, so grateful that I found you when I found you. Um, because that was like, that was like literally from God because I, what did you, I, what was the, what, what did you pay to work with me for three months? Like what was I charging back then? 5,000. <laughs> and it was what? the scariest 5,000 I had ever invested. I know. I, I like, remember that you I'm were like nervous to talk to a person. This is crazy. And I was like, but in my gut, it's telling me. And it's funny because right before monster jam, and like, if you go back and see our, our first episode, you, you would know um, that story. But honestly, right before Monster Jam, I had told my husband, I was like, I just need to find somebody who knows what they're doing that doesn't know they're good yet <laughs> and that I can work with and like be friends with. And he was like, yeah, good luck. And then like Monster Jam happened. And, and I was like, my Again, gut is telling me. Daddy Universe. <laughs> Daddy Universe was like, oh, okay, that's what you want. Here she is. Because I had I tried a business coach before and she was like, well, what's your ideal goal? And this is also part of that human design because I'm not a specific manifester. I'm like all about the feels, right? So mm -hmm. like you tell me to work on details and it feels like I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah. she, she came at me and she was like, um, she was like, well, what's your ultimate goal? What's your big year look like? And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, well, figure it out. And then see see how much that would cost and like we'll work to make that and I was like oh okay and at this point in my life I never thought about dreaming big I never had a giant goal I had no mm -hmm. idea what that even meant I never met anybody who was wildly successful in that in that area and so when I came back and I was like well my big goal I, I mean I I can afford my big goal like my big dream year and it was like maybe a two-week trip was like maybe buy new clothes once a month like they were like mm -hmm. really small things um small in my head now compared to right. you know, then and so she was like oh well then what do you need a coach for you're fine and I was like oh okay and I just was like remember thinking like okay well I guess I guess I'm good right and I was like something's still missing and it was like that realization like one I can't I can't definitively say this is what I want because mm -hmm. I want the feeling not the thing mm -hmm. um but also never uh, realizing now that I was never given the opportunity to, to uh, truly dream big and like yeah. really reach for the stars. Like my stars were always like, well, I can get one, you know, like this is okay. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to that realization, even years later, like now, when I see women in that girl club who are like reaching out and they're like, well, it would be really great if I can make like an extra $500 a month. And I'm like, 
Girl, you're I hate that marketing. Amazing. I hate that marketing so much. Like, oh my God, it, you, what if you just wanted to make an extra $500 a month? Like everybody would uh, like, like to make an extra $500 a month, but like also everybody would like to make an extra $10,000 a month. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's like sets, they, you know, these women, they have like this, the mindset that I had. So I understand it. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, there's so much more you can be doing. And and I always hear, well, I used to be a nurse and I stayed home with my kids. I haven't worked in a while. I'm like, do you know how much knowledge a nurse has that you could be selling that knowledge? Because I don't know how to do the high blink on a baby. I mean, I do be the JT, but like most moms wouldn't like, what do you do about a chemical burn? What do you, I'm like, these are ideas that literally flow out of my head. And I think because I'm a MG, but like when I talk to somebody, I'm like, this is my superpower. Like I can take your passions and I can connect it to a job and like, let's create the connection and like the roadmap to get there. Yeah. And so like, let's just get you started. I'm going to show you what's possible because yeah. I think I've done it so many times, not just with Queen Bee. I used to have like a, a cowboy, um, shoe boot sleeve collection. I used to make those when I was pregnant. I did that for a little bit. Yeah, And so I did <laughs> media management. I've done necklaces. Uh-huh. I've done it all. And mm-hmm. so like, I think that I've never been afraid to fall, fail forward. Like right? mm-hmm. I've never been afraid. Like I'm going to try it. If it sucks, mm-hmm. it sucks. But most of the mm-hmm. time they actually worked out really well. And the reason I had to stop the business was because I didn't believe that I bottlenecked myself until I burned out and I didn't yeah. understand the next step. And it wasn't until I met you that I was like, Oh, I see what's happening. This is why I'm burning out. And you're like, hire the assistant, start delegating, start thinking bigger, start doing these things. And I was like, Oh, so she's like, stop putting yourself in a box. I'm like, Oh, okay. Okay. And so when that happened, expansion happened everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah. What has like, (laughs) this isn't me. I mean, you're going to toot my horn right now, but what like, cause this is important. Like all of these things you're saying, people like forget that you know, everyone thinks like, oh, you know, I don't need a coach. No, you don't. You don't need a coach. Like you truly don't need a coach. Like everything that I have like taught you or like everything that you and I have like worked through together, like, because I, I stopped being your coach a long time ago. Like I'm your mentor at this point. Like it's, it's like true mentorship. We're friends. Like it's, it, I, it's not just like, how do I do this? Let me teach you how to do this. Like yeah. you're a very hyper capable person who could pretty much Google anything. And like, I'm very confident in that, but it's, th- yes, you could do this all yourself. And you spent 10 years, like getting to where your biggest goal was like $5,000 a month. Yeah. And then in the last three years, your goals have like blown up. And it's like, that's the definition of a quantum leap. And so I want to know like what has mentorship, like true mentorship, like meant to you and like your business, because this is, it's like, yeah, you don't need it, but like how fast do you want to move? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's the biggest question is like, how, how long are you willing to make mistakes? Like, cause that's really. Or shame yourself for making mistakes. Cause you're always going to make mistakes. Yeah. I think mistakes in the sense of like, I say, okay. So when I obviously I did the 10 years without you. Mm -hmm. And I was so nervous and so worried about making mistakes or making mistakes that were going to be costly or not investing in me and things like that, that things took twice as long because Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm not going to get the nice printer because, you know, what if this client doesn't come through? What if this thing? And so he started playing the what if game a lot and it was downplaying me. And yeah. whether or not it's a good business decision or not, you almost need a mentor in front of you, like you said, to be your mirror, because yeah. we're always, we're always our harshest critic. Mm-hmm. And I think that's true. But I think sometimes we're our harshest critic in the wrong way. Yeah. So like your mirror can go, your mentor, a true mentor who can look at you and say, yes, yeah, maybe this isn't a great move right now, but look at else you can be doing. And then they mm-hmm. like pivot your perception on like how mm-hmm. your moving through business, how you're making decisions, how you choose to invest. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we talked about something just recently and I was like, Hey, this, this girl I want to work with is like 15 grand. I don't really remember what the service was. And you're like, well, you could, but I think the money would be better spent in X, Y, Z. So you were helping me just make good business decisions based Mm -hmm. on what I needed. And you can see that from a third person, whereas 
when you're in your business, all you're doing is you're looking at things like this, right? And especially if you've never had a coach or a mentor, all you're looking at is this. And you mm-hmm. you forget to step back outside of your business because you're yeah. constantly putting yourself in your business. Yeah. So when you have a mentor who can be honest, call you out on your BS because you have before and you tell me to grow up or like put on my big I'm like, weight. this is not a problem. I don't know why you're treating <laughs> yeah. it like one. Yeah. Like, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also like, it's also nice to have real support. I think in the, in a female community, I just don't mm-hmm. think that that always feels, uh, available. So yeah. when I even have you as my mentor and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm really excited about this thing, you know, and even if it's a quick text, you're like, Oh my God, that's so exciting. Congratulations. But if you don't have a community of friends who understand business or understand, um, the hardships or the trials that goes along with entrepreneurship yep. that it's hard to, to celebrate wins because you're like, Oh, all I think I talk about is my business, but yeah. it's nice to have that person that support. Yeah. And I think also to have, um, know that you can be open and honest with somebody who's been where you, where you've already been, you know? Well, and it's, it's like, it's like, we don't talk every day. I mean, we talk every day now because we're friends. So like, <laughs> but like when we, like, as far as like yeah. me mentoring you, like there's that we go weeks without you asking me anything like, yeah, you'll come onto the calls and like, you'll be there. But like it sometimes we'll go weeks without it, but it's like knowing that it's in your back pocket, knowing that no matter what you go through, you have somebody there who's like, that cares about you first as a friend and second as like, you know, a fellow entrepreneur who wants to see you succeed. Like, that's how I feel with my mentor. Like I go, I'll go weeks without talking to her sometimes, but like, I know that when it, I need it or when I want it, it's there And like, then it becomes like true mentorship really becomes like, I always say like, I am your friend first. Like I want to make sure that you, the human is okay first. And then we can talk business. Like business is easy. It's the, it's like knowing who you are and it's like knowing what you're capable of. And it's like being reminded that like anything is figure outable. That's the stuff that we don't put a high enough value on. Like you could Google most business things like you could Google, but to truly like have somebody to like walk with, like that's, I mean, I think it's like an invaluable thing. Like I believe that I will never not have mentorship. I will never not. I mean, I think, I think it's, I, I feel, I almost feel sad for entrepreneurs that like go without a mentor because it's like, who, who, who do you talk to? Yeah. Who are you bouncing your ideas off of? Like, just like, like, who's telling you that you're awesome? Like you need, yeah. we need more, especially as women. I think we need more than like our partner to tell us that we're great. Like we need, we need a, like, I'm always going to tell you you're great because I genuinely think you're great. And if you have an idea that's like not great, like I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you on it. And that's not because I'm an asshole. It's because I truly, I truly see your potential. And I know that like you also now see your potential. So if you're playing small, I'm going to talk you through the reason why you're playing small so that we can get to a bigger idea, like hiring the assistant. We were so afraid to do that because of how much money would be going out. But I'm like, but what is, what's the priority? The priority is peace. The priority is more freedom. If you are single-handedly doing everything, then you're capped. Like you have to do this. And like, to not have that kind of support. I mean, even like, I mean, my mentor tells me stuff like that all the time. She's like, you need to do this. Like, this is what you need to be focused on right now. And I'm like, but that's a lot of money. She's like, yeah, but what's the, what's the trade off? Like you continue to do it. You know, it's, it's like, it's, and it's something that I think a lot of people, you don't know until you know, and then once yeah. you know, you can't unlearn it. Yeah. And I think that for a lot of the years, like I was doing like the get my free guide here, get this free. And it was all this free information, right? Which is like you said, everything is Googleable. Like you can Google anything, how to do this in business, but like it's the human experience and it's the human emotions of like dealing with an actual human that says like you, how do you like, how do you Google through like, I'm having an anxiety attack because this person wants to know if they can have a refund on a product that they missed. Like you can't Google that. Right. But you can ask your mentor, like, what do I do in this scenario? And you can say, I need a professional opinion and I need your help. Please walk me through this. And so why every time, why every time when somebody, when like I, have to, you know, when there's a big, pro- like a big project that comes in, why every time does my chest tighten? And then I like, I like freak out and self-sabotage. Like, why is that happening? Like you can't Google yeah. that. Yeah. And if you did, you probably did a really crazy answer. <laughs> right. 
Right. Like they would tell you to just like go talk to a therapist, which like, listen, I'm all for therapy, but like at a certain point, therapy is just like, it's just talking. Like I'm interested in like, let's actually move through this so that we can like go somewhere else. Well, I think you're amazing. And if you don't follow McLean, you can follow Queen Bee. We'll put all of your handles in um, our show notes. So you can click on our show notes, but like follow her personal page, like follow that girl club, like keep, you know, even if you're just like a, I I think like not just, even if you're a person who just like wants to follow inspiring women who are walking the walk and talking the talk. Like, I think Micheline is a great person to follow. I mean, you know, you're one of my, you're one of my greatest friends now. So it's, that's the other thing is like, you meet your, you meet real friends through this. Um, but I'm just so proud of you. I'm so excited for you. It's been, and it continues to be just like such an honor to like have a front row seat to everything that you create and, you know, to have, you know, to, to like see the things that we work on and then they come to fruition. It's like, of course it worked. Like, I feel like not only do I feel like proud mom, but I'm also like, that like, yes, that's my girl. Like that's my friend. She did that. And it's just been, it's just such an honor. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing all of the things. Um, Thank you. I love talking to you. I love talking to you about business and life. So this is always a blast. I'm always excited about this part. I know we could do this all day. I feel like we could, we could have conversations like this all the time. We could have like our own series. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I mean, this is just like, I mean, Micheline's a perfect example of like why human design can change your life. And it's not like that human design itself changes your life. It's like what you learn about yourself through human design and how that translates to your life. I think that's the best part about human design and you're such a beautiful, beautiful representation of it. So follow her, go click all her links, check out everything she does and uh, we'll see you on our next episode. Bye.